Close your eyes and imagine. What if the things in life that cause us the greatest pain, the things that bring us grief, are challenges? Challenges designed to help us grow to ultimately become what we were always meant to be. We feel like we've been buried, but what if, like a seed, we've been planted? And having been planted, we grow to become a mighty tree. Now, open your eyes. Open your eyes to this way of viewing life. Come with me as we explore your true, infinite, eternal nature. This is Grief to Growth, and I am your host, Brian Smith. Hey everybody, this is Brian back with another episode of Grief to Growth. And today I've got with me Adam Rabinovich. And Adam is the executive, direct, executive director of an organization called COPE, which is a nonprofit grief and healing organization dedicated to helping parents and families living with the loss of a child. And that COPE is an acronym for Connecting Our Paths Eternally. Adam was previously the executive director, executive director of Giving Open Access to Learning, our goal which is a nonprofit educational program that provides children from underserved communities with the resources to help them get the most out of their education. As you can tell, Adam's been doing this type of work for a while. Prior to that, he was a deputy director of Neighbors Link, a nonprofit committed to strengthening the healthy integration of immigrants in local communities. Adam is also proud to be a volunteer board member and to serve as board choir, board chair, I'm sorry, of Brick by Brick, an NGO and social enterprise dedicated to improving the lives of children and families in East Africa. So Adam is a busy man. And with that, I want to welcome Adam to Grief to Growth. Thank you so much, Brian, and for that warm introduction and for inviting me to uh, join you today on behalf of uh, all the families that we're supporting. And, and really, thank you for pronouncing Rabinovich correctly. When you and I met uh, months ago, uh, I, I said, uh, I wish it was like Smith, but it ain't. So uh, thank you for, uh, for all of that and really glad to be here today. Yeah, it's, it's really good to sit down and get to, to have this conversation with you virtually. You and I met a few months ago through a mutual friend. That's where I learned about COPE. I love the work that you guys are doing. I wanted to, to introduce COPE to, to more people and let them know what, are, what resources are available because as parents that have had children pass, we can always use you know whatever's out there. So how did you get involved in doing this type of work? You've been, you've been doing this type of uh, outreach for quite a while. Yeah, so I've been committed to social impact at work through nonprofit leadership uh, for the last decade of my career uh, as a volunteer and as a staff leader. And I came to um, uh, join the COPE uh, community uh, just ab about three years ago. So this is being recorded in, uh, in the early fall of 2021. I joined in August 2018 and flashing forward uh, 30, 40 years before that, uh, I was born uh, healthy and um, uh, have lived uh, 48 years and counting um, in uh, 1973. And a couple of years after I was born, uh, my baby sister Marnit came along and she was born uh, very ill and uh, she uh, died before the age of two. Uh, I have uh, some vague, somehow vague and vivid memories of playing peekaboo with Marnit and playing the big brother role for her for, for the, the couple of years that she was with us. Mm -hmm. um, my brother and sister came along after Marnit died and they never got to meet her. So my parents, my family have been living with the loss of a child with my uh, loss of my sister for 40 plus years. And we've been living with that loss and in many ways, not talking about the loss, not talking about Marnit, uh, certainly not as a, a family unit. So by being able to connect with COPE three years ago and you and so many people in the grief and healing space, including parents and siblings and families living with the loss of a child, this club that no one wants to belong to, it's really given me some personal and professional meaning and purpose in the work that I'm doing uh, as part of this larger community in a way that I never had. And I'd like to say and think that it's given my family some new tools and common language as well, living with the loss of a child. So uh, that's a little bit of what got me um, involved in the work and has kept me uh, very engaged and passionate uh, about supporting other families like mine, like yours. We know there's so many out there that uh, need support, need each other, need connection, and COPE is one of the ways that people can connect and uh, get that support. I think that's, that's so important that you talk about that, how your sister passed when you were a young child and how that's impacted you even 40 plus years 
later, a lot of times, especially as parents, we think about how the loss of a child impacts us, but we don't think about how it impacts siblings and the whole family, the whole family unit going forward. And it's been my experience, a lot of families don't talk about it. You know, I've, I've talked to clients that like, they don't even mention the, the name of the child that's passed and they don't realize that does have an impact on everybody. Yeah, uh, well said. And again, I don't wanna overstate uh, the, the, the newness of it, but um, it's really just in the last few years that I've been able and my family has been able to use some of those tools, techniques and, and go out of our own comfort zone, I guess, in some cases um, mm -hmm. and, and talk a bit, a bit about Marnit, uh, even though she was only with us for uh, less than two years. Yeah, children make they make an impact no matter how long they're here, you know, yeah, how long or how yeah. short they're here. I was just interviewing someone earlier today who had a daughter who didn't live at all outside outside the womb, but made it made an impact on their family. So, sure. you, you know, your your sister is still making ripples today, and I think that's so cool. I just I just light up when I hear I think about something like that. Yeah, that that's really someone, really well said and sweet. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, it's someone that came in for what seems like a short time, but you know, still, still living to this day through, through you. So kudos to you. Thanks for that. Yes. So tell me about COPE. How did, how did COPE get started? COPE came together as a, uh, again, a group of uh, members of this club that no one wants to belong to. Our founders um, met each other shortly after the losses of their then adult children. This is going back to the early mid 1990s. Um, they leaned on each other, they still lean on each other uh, these years later uh, as friends, as colleagues, and as uh, board members and, and committed uh, supporters of COPE. Um, they started uh, a network, an informal network, uh, bringing together other parents and some siblings uh, in different families across Long Island, New York, uh, all who had this common thread of they've been living with the loss of a child or children. Um, built enough of a network and saw enough of a need and uh, an opportunity for uh, a unique solution in our area geographically and um, hopefully a model for other communities across the country and beyond. And in 1999, started a, a nonprofit corporation. Uh, here we are 22 years later, sustaining, growing in many ways. Uh, the last year plus, I don't need to tell you or your audience that the need and demand for grief and healing and bereavement support has only increased with uh, drivers like COVID-19 not being the only one. Certainly, um, we're seeing a lot of spikes around uh, in, in the communities that we're supporting uh, downstate New York and beyond around death by suicide and uh, uh, homicide and gun violence, and also certainly trends, um, which hopefully are starting to turn around locally and nationally around uh, addiction and uh, opioid overdose. So uh, as uh, families and communities um, continue uh, for the foreseeable future, meaning for um, the rest of time, uh, need grief and healing support, COPE wants to be one of the tools that people can lean on and again, connect with each other and get the support that they deserve. Yeah, absolutely. So, so how did you guys fare during you know, during uh, the last year or so, twenty twenty with the pandemic, yeah, twenty twenty one with the things that we're going through now, we're still not really out of it. So, mm -hmm. how did that impact the the work that Cope's doing? Great question, and I've gotten to know you. I'll share two two words, which uh, uh, I know are, are close to your heart and your work. Uh, I'd say bravery and technology. So, first, uh, as the pandemic was rearing its ugly head, we stepped back, but really just for a minute and. Uh, asked ourselves as a as an organization and the community that we support the families, um, can we continue to to uh, uh, pr provide support? Not really, should we? But can we and how? Mm -hmm. So we pivoted or moved very quickly. Uh, this is uh, March into April of 2020 um, to telehealth. So um, instead of podcasts, we've created safe spaces, secure spaces for parents, for siblings, for teens for other bereaved and grieving individuals and families to come together, um, not quite replicating the experience of being uh, side by side, shoulder to shoulder at a table uh, in a room uh, together, but uh, we've come a long way. And we've also continued to ask for and receive tremendous support uh, as a nonprofit corporation. We rely um, uh, extraordinarily on the, the generosity and contributions of donors and foundations and um, uh, partners across the board, and everyone has really stepped up. So um, between 
uh, leaning into technology um, and uh, learning with technology and not being uh, shy about asking people to support the work that we do so we can keep being there for the families that count on us. Um, we've managed to come out of whatever this most recent chapter of the pandemic is and have some learned lessons for um, plowing ahead for the future as unknown as some of the unknowns may be. Yeah. So what are some of the services that you offer to people? Yeah, thank you for asking. Uh, the core of uh, what we provide are peer-to-peer -peer, uh, support groups for, in some cases, parents living with the loss of a child. In other groups, siblings living with the loss of a brother or sister. And we also offer groups for teens living with the loss of uh, a loved family member. So each of those support groups, historically in person, currently through telemental health, the future, probably some uh, hybrid model of the two. Um, each of those groups has a licensed clinician, a, a social worker in the room, uh, whether it's again, virtual or in person. And they're there not as a therapist, but as a facilitator. So it's really the, the peer to peer model with the facilitation of a professional that um, we hear again and again from family members uh, helps them as they move through their grief journey. That's one area and one way that we support uh, bereaved families and individuals. We also offer, and this has been um, a real uh, um, uh, increase in, in, in um, uh, the way we've connected with families during the pandemic, uh, a series of healing workshops. Uh, and you've been part of some of those as a presenter and a sharer. So we continue to design and partner with people including you and so many professionals and uh, grieving and bereaved family members across the country and across the world to provide healing workshops uh, open to all and any uh, currently online. And that includes everything from um, uh, uh, Tai Chi, which will uh, be having another Tai Chi movement uh, workshop coming up. We've had yoga, mindfulness and meditation. Um, we've offered uh, drama therapy, music therapy, trying to provide as many tools as we can uh, for as many people to meet them in their uh, unique grief journeys and trying to do it at a scale. And technology, again, has helped play a role in that to meet more people with limited resources. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really um, fascinating. And it sounds like a great uh, breadth of services you're offering to people. But it brings up the, the question I have, because you and I met, I live in Ohio, you live in New York. And as you said, I've spoken at one of your workshops. And I know that you guys geographically are centered in New York, and that's been your traditional base. Have you found that you're growing outside of that due to this, the challenges you're going through? Yes, in a few ways. And um, a lot of it's through network and coalition building. So uh, one of the things that I've seen, and, and thanks again for sharing in my bio that I've uh, been focused on the nonprofit sectors, too often in different uh, fields and missions, there can be um, silos and, and some fragmentation between uh, groups between community organizations doing great work in their communities, but not always having the capacity or the bandwidth to connect with people and organizations uh, across the county or across the state lines or whatever it is. You and I are now connected uh, uh, many states away and, and maybe even a time zone or two. So um, one of the ways that we've been uh, both scaling our impact uh, geographically, but also um, working with other like-minded organizations is we are in our 10th year of being part of a, a, a terrific uh, national, now international organization, uh, US and Canada called the Aluna Network. And Aluna um, supports families and primarily kids in a variety of ways, including uh, the Camp Erin Network. And this is uh, free bereavement grief camps for kids aged seven to 17, living with the loss of a loved one. So we just had our 10th Camp Erin New York City, which is for the New York City metro area. And we also um, hold a concurrent parent and caregiver retreat. So uh, perhaps you and your audience can envision that in a, uh, a balanced camp experience, so there's bereavement and grief support along with fun sl uh, water slides and capture the flag and all the things that kids and sometimes their uh, adult parents and caregivers um, uh, want to engage in, uh, come together for, for a, a shared experience. And also, again, bringing together some common tools and common languages. So we hear from families who go through the Camp Aaron experience that after that, their own family unit has, has some shared um, new techniques that they can use around the loss of their shared loved ones. Um, in addition to that, I'll mention that we uh, work closely with the National Alliance uh, for Children's Grief 
and uh, increasingly part of uh, New York State and uh, US initiative under the Evermore banner, um, which is helping to fix bereavement care uh, for all Americans. Um, and that includes systems change, policy change, legisl legislative change uh, across the country, and hopefully additional resources for uh, people like you and, and, and Grief to Growth, organizations like COPE, so that we can do more as we continue to see increased demand for all of our services. So those are a couple of the ways that we've been connecting, learning from, sharing with, um, beyond the, uh, the origins of, of Long Island and uh, New York City metro area. We'll get back to Grief to Growth in just a few seconds. Did you know that Brian is an author and a life coach? If you're grieving or know someone who is grieving, his book, Grief to Growth, is a best-selling, easy-to-read book that might help you or someone you know. People work with Brian as a life coach to break through barriers and live their best lives. You can find out more about Brian and what he offers at www.grieftogrowth.com, www.grief, the number two, growth.com. If you'd like to support this podcast, visit www.patreon.com slash grief to growth, www.patreon.com slash grief, the number two, growth, to make a financial contribution. And now, back to grief to growth. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting, you know, as we, you know, as we go through challenges and sometimes they seem like there are setbacks, but you know, as what grief to growth is all about, right. It's it, it, sometimes they can be opportunities. So I know like it's, you and I met during the pandemic and, you know, I've spoken to your group because of the, the, the use of technology. Um, it, it's funny. All, I, all of my clients are remote. I don't have any clients in Cincinnati. I was, I was talking with someone the other day about, you know, some grief work and they're like, so how many clients do you see face to face? And I don't see any. So, uh, it's that's it's a great it's a brave new world that we live in so it's really exciting and I, and I can see cope because of your your caring and your expertise really starting to grow outside of that the area that you guys are in locally yeah that's so well said and i do value the face-to-face -face time with you and so many others even if it is uh, pixelated or virtual in your case of course it's as clear as uh, as it could be but uh, yeah no uh, well said yeah. Yeah. Well, if there, there's nothing that will replace face to face. As I said, it's it's um, I look at it as, a, as an opportunity to really get to get beyond. You know, I, I was just talking with someone right before we got on. I was interviewing with a, a young woman in, in Germany. Um, so I was like, I would have I would have never met her if it had been yeah. if it hadn't been for the technology. And it's so cool that we can just get on and, and do this. And I've spoken with your group and I'm happy to be part of, you know, helping people as, as much as I can, you know, anywhere they happen to be. Well, we value that. And I give so much credit to the families, uh, our staff, our volunteers, our partners, including you, who have either embraced the new technology, even if it's not comfortable um, in one way or another, and uh, really stepped up. And um, it's helped to keep some of those uh, connections and ties among families and, and in our case, um, back to the COPE organization uh, intact and hopefully enhanced in some ways, even though we're not there to uh, pat each other on the shoulder, give the hugs and dry the tears together in person. Yeah. Well, I know you, you guys are doing great work there. So for people that are remote, though, that might be interested in getting connected with COPE that might want to reach out to you for some sort of help, where would you suggest they start? Yeah, great place to start is on our website, copefoundation.org. And I know you'll make sure that the uh, the listening audience has access to that. They can also um, follow us on our social media feeds, uh, which they'll get to right through uh, the website. And we have um, not only direct links to get involved in our uh, support programs and our healing workshops, which uh, will continue to um, un unroll and unfurl in the, in the coming months and years. Um, but there's a, a whole bunch of resources that people can access any time of day. Um, we'll be uh, not competing with you, but hopefully adding some value in, in the podcast market in the near future. Um, but we have suggested reading and um, blogs and articles and uh, also a volunteer uh, led um, a warm line, not quite a hotline. It's not a crisis line, but these are trained volunteers, bereaved parents and siblings who are there to pick up the phone, lend an empathetic ear and make that connection for anyone who wants to reach out, regardless of the time zone uh, or the time of day. Yeah, well, I think that peer to peer model is really important. Um, after after my daughter passed, I did go to grief counseling briefly. 
I went to see a guy, um, and actually he was a grief counselor. He was a, at a hospice here locally. And it was, it was somewhat helpful. Um, I was pretty far along on my spiritual journey, if you want to call it that anyway. So I only went to him a few times, but I find it's really helpful to talk to other parents, to talk to, and to, to, to find out what they're going through and not feel alone. So I, I really, um, I really value that, that peer to peer connection that you guys offer. So people can say, Hey, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I feel. Oh, I'm not crazy. You know, I'm, I'm not insane. Cause we feel like when, when we lose a child, we feel like we're losing our minds. You know, we really literally feel like we can't go on and, and function anymore. Yeah. That message of uh, you, I, we are not alone is so powerful and it just needs to, to continue to be said and, 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 and demonstrated and shown that uh, no one in this club um, is alone and it is a club. No one wants to belong to it, as I said, as you may uh, not along to, but um, uh, certainly uh, I encourage uh, anyone who's listening uh, and looking for a lifeline, reach out, reach out to Cope, reach out to Brian, reach out to your local um, support mechanisms and uh, please, please stay connected. You're not alone. Yeah, well, and the thing is, you know, again, I go back to your, your the opening and you talking about your sister and you know, I, I just look at it. No life is lost. You know, people sometimes will 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 look and will judge. And again, as parents, you know, my my child only lived for X amount of time. You know, my daughter was fifteen, or someone. You know, and and we we put we place judgments on it, but we don't know what effect that that's going to have. We don't really know what it's going to do in the future and how much purpose that person's life could possibly serve long beyond the time that they're they're here in this physical plane. Yeah. Um, and I see this just as you just as a shining example of that. Uh, and likewise, and uh, I'm so glad that we're connected and uh, we get to uh, to support other families together um, along the way. Yeah. Well, um, Adam, what else should our audience know about supporting uh, grieving parents, families? I know you, you've shared a lot uh, what COPE can offer um, just in general. What is what's the philosophy of COPE? What is what is your what is your vision? So our vision is that no one should grieve alone, and that means no one. So uh, as you and I have been talking about today, um, there's lots of resources for, for people to connect to, um, maybe not enough, and hopefully uh, as we move together to increase awareness of the need for bereavement care uh, at the national and state levels, there'll only be more supports uh, going forward, whether it's paid bereavement leave for families um, who need uh, those extra days um, just to make sure that they can take care of themselves, take care of their families in those, those early days, um, whether it's after a traumatic loss or any kind of loss. Um, so, so there's opportunities also to get involved and let uh, one's voice be heard. So share your experiences with um, local community members. You can share your experiences uh, with uh, elected officials and, um, uh, and, 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 and ask for support, not only for yourselves, but for um, the next grieving mom, the next grieving dad or brother or sister. So um, amplifying the message that uh, everyone deserves uh, support and no one should grieve alone is critical. And uh, we're also helping and hoping, hope, hoping that the, the conversation around grief and bereavement and healing changes in our country and our society so that um, uh, dynamics like I mentioned in my family, maybe there's less stigma going forward about uh, death and loss and grief and healing. And I know there's great groups who focus on that, including the Reimagine community. If your um, audience isn't already aware of them, they can uh, learn more, let's reimagine, and really just trying to shift the conversation um, so that um, everyone feels supported and that those who care about uh, their grief grieving and bereaved loved ones um, have the tools and the language and uh, and know what to say and what not to say. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's really important. And I like that, you know, about shifting, you said shifting the conversation, I might be gone, go beyond that and saying even having the conversation. Uh, again, I talk to so many people that say, I don't, I don't want to share my grief because I don't want to feel like I'm making someone else sad. And people will even say to us sometimes, well, aren't you over that by now? You know, you, you should, you know, and so they'll kind of make us feel shut down, like we shouldn't talk about it. And I really love your philosophy of no one should grieve alone. And I think I completely agree with that. I think we are met as, as human beings, we're social creatures, and we need to share our experiences, especially the experience of grief. And when we go through it alone, um, 
I, I, I'll never forget, I was driving one day and I was listening to podcasts. I was like, it was right after my daughter had passed away. And I was listening to all these grief podcasts. I think it was Sandra Champlain and she had a woman on. Her name was Donna Visaki and her daughter had, had passed away. And Donna, she tells a story about she was standing on the curb and there was a bus driving by and she, she was thought about stepping out in front of the bus. And it really caught my attention because I was like, this is a feeling that I've had several times. And I was so glad to hear someone else say that out loud, even though it's something we wouldn't necessarily share because people think we're crazy or we're suicidal. But it's really important that people be uh, in a space where they feel comfortable sharing those types of things. And then they know, you know, people, they know that they're not alone. So yeah, I love okay. what you guys are doing. I'll also, as you were talking, I was just uh, remembering, and if you happen to hear uh, typing in the background, excuse me, I just want to make sure that if your audience is interested, they know where to go. There's a, um, a platform called speakinggrief.org, and uh, I know you have access to so many resources if you want uh, my help in sharing any of the ones that we're talking about today. I'll, um, uh, of course, uh, make sure that, that you have those to share out with the listening audience or the viewing audience. Uh, and Speaking Grief is not only a documentary uh, about some of the themes that we're talking about today, yes. but... It also yeah. has some, some, some great tools, uh, not only for grieving um, individuals and family members, but again, for those who care about them. And so I uh, encourage folks to check out their resources as well. Yeah, that was a great documentary. And as you said that, it reminded me, I had a young lady on who was in that film um, as, one of my, as one of my guests. So Excellent. the thing is, there's a, there are a lot more resources available now. And, and uh, as you said earlier, I'm a technology guy. So I, I just, I'm excited about the possibilities of these things that we can get out there now, the documentaries, and that we can, we can share with people literally around the world. And you know, I, I've even seen a lot of it now in media where I think they're becoming more aware of I'm, I'm I don't know how Cope feels about the afterlife, but I think the afterlife is to me one of the most important things. So uh, I'm just seeing more openness to people willing to talk about how our our children are not lost that they that they they go on. Well, I'll, I'll just mention a couple of things on two uh, related unrelated topics that you just highlighted. Um, one is uh, as part of Cope's origin, uh, and people can learn more on our website about uh, our history uh, at copefoundation.org. Our founder, Lily Julian, um, had a, a vision, a dream that her daughter, um, who she lost, uh, Michelle, uh, visited her and said, uh, effectively, essentially, hey, mom, I'm okay. Uh, take care of yourself and, e and each other. And that was uh, part of the catalyst that, uh, that started COPE. And we continue to offer uh, a series of programs, including under the banner of signs and synchronicities, mm -hmm. where uh, professionals and uh, lay people and family members get to come together and share some of their stories and the signs and synchronicities that keep them connected to our loved ones. And uh, uh, so I appreciate you um, bringing that to uh, the forefront of our conversation today. And I also just wanted to, to highlight, and I know we'll be wrapping up shortly, so just to not only again, thank you for the opportunity to share, uh, but going back to our introduction uh, in today's conversation that uh, one, one of the um, uh, clear realities that I've learned uh, doing this work now for the last few years and talking to my family uh, for the first time in many ways was that there was nothing like them for COPE or for us like COPE or Grief right. to Growth or so many organizations uh, 30, 40, maybe even 20 years ago. So to your point, uh, the fact that we are seeing some of these shifts and uh, technology being one of the, the pieces to, to helping unlock that uh, is really critical. And uh, again, none of us can do it alone. So um, it's, it's uh, wonderful that you and I um, and uh, some of our, our fellow and shared, uh, shared collaborators are, are in this together to support each other and support families. Awesome, awesome. Well, I, uh, we were come running time, uh, close to time to wrap. I do want to let everybody know that the website is copefoundation.org and there'll be a link, of course, in the show notes. Uh, Adam and I were talking beforehand. There's a lot of events that COPE does that are coming up. So I'm sure there's a calendar of events there. So right. for whatever time you're listening to this, you can find out what's going on currently. And if you're not in the New York area, COPE could still be a great resource for you. So I just want to put that out there for people that happen to be maybe somewhere else, but do want to get connected. Exactly. Thanks. We're here for anyone and everyone. So please reach out. Um, and again, you're not alone. All right. Well, Adam, it was great seeing you today um, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for having us and all the good work you're doing. 
So that does it for another episode of Grief to Growth. I sure hope you enjoyed it. If you like this content, make sure you subscribe. So click on the subscribe button here and then click on the bell to receive notifications and click on all. That way you'll be notified whenever I release new content. Thanks for watching and have a great day.